the uh, directives concerning initial directives concerning farm worker housing have been on the books for a while. And I think a lot of people saw these as potential sites for rapid spread. Should the uh, requirement for testing have been put in place earlier? You know, uh, I'm sure that uh, throughout this, there are many things that, you know, in retrospect, you could say, but I think we have responded to the science and the ability to do the testing. So as you know, we have been inhibited by a limitation of testing capability for some period of time, in large part because the federal government would not get off the dime and actually help manufacture the test swabs and the reagents and the, and, and the analytical capability. So as we have increased the ability to do the tests, that has allowed us to expand the places where we're doing testing, including these ag facilities. Now, obviously, we've also seen the uh, some of these get hit hard, so we've identified where the problem is. That helps identify the problem as well. So I think given the fact that we just didn't have the testing capability until now, uh, probably means we're doing it about the right period of time. I wanted to ask for an update to the best of your knowledge, sir, on the loss of ESD funds, of unemployment funds, in the uh, theft that was detected uh, back in May. Uh, about $650 million recorded loss, about 300 million or half that uh, recovered as of late May. Have there been further recoveries or are you aware of any progress in uh, catching the folks responsible? Uh, there have been uh, further recoveries. I'm not sure they've been dramatic. I think the numbers are more like five and a half uh, was originally lost and three and a half has been recovered. So I think the net is in the ballpark of 200 at this moment. So there have been some initial there have been some additional recoveries and relatively small. Uh, I don't believe there's been uh, arrests to date. The U.S. Attorney, FBI, other agencies are investigating this, uh, and I assume they're being as aggressive as possible. It's a very complex, sophisticated international ring that was involved in this. They hit quite a number of states. Uh, we're not the only state that has suffered this. Uh, I'm glad that we've had significant recovery of these funds of about $350 million. And it's been fr very frustrating because we've also at the same time had this enormous desire to get benefits to people as quickly as we can. And we've been fighting to do that. We've made real progress on that. We've now gone through the 200,000, what we call the IDQ, and about 80,000 in the adjudication queue. And we've now cleared that so people's Claims have been resolved in those groups, but we still have work to do with people who, uh, who are still waiting uh, from some of the more, more recent claims that we're trying to work through as quickly as we can. We're about half a year into this pandemic. Some of the frustration that gets expressed has to do with masking and social distancing, uh, the sentiment that we should protect the vulnerable, protect the elderly, but those with no pre-existing health conditions, those in, in vigor, should be allowed to go about their lives, and that businesses in particular should be allowed to reopen. Uh, what do you say to that sentiment when you hear it? Well, uh, I'm really glad that people are masking up. What I would say first is the, the sentiment has been very positive, including in your area, where a high percentage of people are wearing masks when they go out shopping and like. We really appreciate that. And the reason is, is we know that it works. And that's why people are wearing masks. We know it works. The science is very clear. We've seen really good progress in Yakima, for instance, where the infection rate has come down dramatically because of the mask usage. It started earlier than some other places. So what I'm hearing is very broad compliance with what we've uh, required, and I think that's really great. That's why, that's why some of the numbers are starting to come down statewide. So that's really good news. Now, why to do that is because we don't like to see people die gasping for breath in a very frequently lonely, difficult uh, death. That's pretty simple. And there are dozens of people, sometimes over two dozen a day, that we're losing of our loved ones. And I don't know who would be callous enough to say that's just okay. And so this isn't rocket science. We don't want our loved ones to die. That's the reason for this. And it's impossible to protect people, uh, everybody, if there's broad scale transmission of this. Now we know that people of an age or those with underlying conditions are much more likely to uh, suffer a fatality, but not the only ones. We had a 19 year old kid who was a star athlete from Puyallup died the other day, no underlying conditions. 
And the fact is, even though our seniors, we can't just lock them in a bottle. You can't provide total protection for them. Even in our nursing homes, we have to have people come in who are caring for them. Nurses, cooks, maintenance people, and they come in from the outside. We can't put those people in a bottle either. And so as long as there's an infection in the community, there is really no way to fully protect uh, our, our older population. And by the way, it's not that, that old, it's over 60. I consider 60 young at this moment. So anyway, it's the only way that we can really protect our loved ones. And I'm glad that we're doing smart things right now. I'm glad we've gotten over this silly argument about masks. People now know they work and they're wearing them big time. And I think that's a great thing. We do have more work to do, right, on our social lives. We need to be more protective of our people. We, we just can't go inside to birthday parties and, and, uh, and, and all kinds of get-togethers and not be wearing masks. That's where a lot of the infection is still occurring. We're hopeful that our increased testing in the ag community, but this is now throughout the community. It's just not people working in agriculture right now. So we're doing good things. Let's keep it up. Thank you very much.